So this new evangelization that Pope Paul VI came up with, Pope John Paul II popularized and spoke about very, very often, and which Pope Benedict XVI is making a charge for all of us in the church today. In fact, he's called a synod next year on the new evangelization, the worldwide synod. And today in Rome, he celebrated a mass to begin the year's preparation for the synod on the new evangelization. Essentially what the new evangelization entails is this. It's a new enthusiasm that all of us are called to appropriate to ourselves for the proclamation of Jesus Christ. That sounds very simple, but it's very important to think of it that way. To create within the church a new enthusiasm for the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Now, it could be very easy in today's world for people to say, you know, things are so bad in our world, and where I live, the culture is so secular, you wonder if the gospel can really take hold. Well, it's when we hear people talk like that, or when we ourselves are tempted to think like that, that it's good for us to remember one very simple fact. In first century Rome, where the Lord sent Peter and Paul, this was a culture that was not only secular in the most profound sense of the world, word, but a culture in which one of the ways that the government controlled the people was by sponsoring from, for them, for their pleasure, in places like the Colosseum, games where human beings would be killed for the sport and for the amusement of the population. And the Lord said to Peter and Paul, go proclaim Christ there. Now think about that. That says a couple of things. First of all, it speaks of the great power of Jesus Christ, the great power and grace of the gospel. It speaks about the fact that the work of evangelization is God's work. It doesn't depend on us, on our skills, but God does depend on our cooperation. He does depend on us and sends us forth so that we will live the gospel deliberately in our lives and then leave the success of it to him. So this new evangelization recaptures that sense of the power of the gospel, which is the power of grace, not the power of my professionalism. The new evangelization, likewise, is a way of living the gospel and finding new opportunities to live it out and proclaim it using all of the technology that the world can offer us today. Not in a gimmicky way, but a way that faithfully and joyfully proclaims what the church teaches and believes in the presence of Jesus Christ. And to do so with confidence. Now that's an important concept for us as Catholics to grab onto. Why should I be confident in proclaiming the gospel? Well, it's not because of me. I shouldn't be confident because I can speak in front of people. I should be confident because the gospel is the truth. I should be confident because Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. Even those people who don't know him, even those people who have never heard of him. I should be confident and joyful because I have the opportunity to proclaim him to people who even though they may not know it yet, hunger for him. This confidence is very different from pride. It should never have even the slightest trace of arrogance to it or conceit. This confidence is in fact the flip side of humility. It's the flip side of trust in God and in God's power and God's love for the people to whom he sends us. And it leads to the final aspect, I think, about this new evangelization and all the things that you and I 
are called upon to do in our day-to-day -day lives. And it's this, it's a very simple thing, but it's the most important of all. The new evangelization is the proclamation of the gospel with enthusiasm, with confidence, with joy, and most importantly, with love. With love. Because the power of the love of Christ, which we're called upon to communicate by the way we live, that power goes far beyond what we imagine to change hearts, to change souls. So when we stop proclaiming the gospel with love, then we've stopped proclaiming the gospel. We do it confidently because of Jesus Christ. If we think about what happened by virtue of the proclamation of the gospel by the likes of Peter and Paul, then we can see what power is still present in the church. We know as Catholics that everything that the Lord Jesus wants his people whom he loves to have, to deepen their relationship with, them, with him, to keep them on the road that leads to eternal life and to give us peace even in this life. Everything that we need abides in the Catholic Church by God's design. And so with faith and love and enthusiasm and joy and confidence, we can proclaim this and live it wherever we are. The very last thing I'll say is this. The new evangelization heightens the role of the baptized in the living out and the proclaiming of the gospel. One of the great teachings of the Second Vatican Council is that it is the laity in their day-to-day -day lives by bringing Christ into their environments by the way they live, by their own discipleship, never a bashful discipleship, but a clear and loving discipleship, by their very discipleship in the world, wherever it is, where they live, where they work, the laity are at the center of the church's evangelizing mission. Now the fascinating thing is that all of these things I've just said are the way in which the church makes itself known in every culture on the face of the earth. If I found that it was different, just going across the Mississippi River to Little Rock, think how it is going from one part of the world to the other. But doesn't that say something to us about the universality of the gift of salvation in Christ Jesus? And another reason for us, all the more, to be confident in Him, to do our part, whatever it is today, to live the gospel, to do our part in the most simplest of things, to be a good disciple in public, so that through us, us, together, and all that the church has to offer, every culture and every place of the earth, the work of salvation continues. Christ continues the work of salvation through you and me, through the church. This hundredth year of the existence of Arkansas Catholic is a testimony to the fact that the Diocese of Little Rock, from its earliest years, has taken seriously its role to help Catholics understand their faith and to be inspired by it all the more, so that in this particular place, this state, which through those 170 years of the existence of this diocese, has gone through many cultural transformations. But isn't it wonderful that throughout those many cultural transformations that have taken place in this state alone, Jesus Christ has been faithfully preached. The Christian faith has been faithfully proclaimed and lived. And Jesus Christ, through the church, has given us everything that we need to live a life of full discipleship to keep us on the way that leads to eternal life. Malia, we all congratulate you and those who came before you on this 100th anniversary. And it's a great joy for us to celebrate this day in which the work of the church is celebrated, the evangelization 
of a people in the past and now for many years to come.